Hi, this is Steve Owens, and I'm excited. I got Larry O here. And if you are on Instagram or if you're on YouTube, I'm sure you've seen his videos for FL Studio. He is a music producer and sound designer, and I'm excited to have you here there, Larry. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So how did growing up in Rhode Island shape your approach to music production, and especially in genres of hip-hop, R&B, and electronic? Um, um, we had a good, like a pretty good music scene when I started out. I started out making beats, had a bunch of friends that were into it, into rapping and singing and stuff, and decided I wanted to get into making beats and got in with a, a crowd of dudes that were in the scene already, started making beats with some friends. Then I joined a band. And at that time, it was probably like 2008, 2009-ish, and the scene was like pretty much thriving. It's, it hasn't been the same pretty much since. There was always shows, local shows to go to. There was always something to do, something to watch. Local shows were always popping. Lo local shows, local bands, and local acts would sell out small venues. It was crazy. And that just doesn't really happen nowadays, especially in Rhode Island. But that got me into the scene, man. And I've been using FL day one, and I've been here ever since. So in other words, you're using it when it was Fruity Loops. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was using F uh, Fruity Loops 3, I think I started on. Oh, great. What inspired you to create your own sample packs and sound libraries, and how do you keep them innovative? Um, the stuff that I create, I just, I've always just wanted to help producers. As far as the sample packs go, I like to do MIDI packs. I have a couple of drum packs and whatnot, but that's not, that's not really like my forte. That's not my thing. My thing that I love to do is create preset packs and uh, templates, mixer templates, session templates, all for FL Studio. Because I know like when I started out, I felt like I needed those things or something like that. And there wasn't really an avenue for that. There wasn't anybody really doing that. So that's why I decided to stay with FL and keep it FL related. There's so many FL users that are out there. And there's so many ways to customize and make templates in FL that really just speed up the workflow. I wanted to you know, bring that to the FL community. What do you think are the key elements of high quality presets and samples that stand out to other producers? I think just making stuff that really nobody's heard or seen before. I think top notch quality things that you don't have to necessarily do anything to after you drop them in. If you're talking about drum samples, I don't think if you're going and paying or getting even a free drum kit nowadays, I don't think you should have to compress it, have to EQ that, unless it's like a sound thing and you want to do it for an effect. But I think samples should just sound good out the gate nowadays, especially there's so much competition. There's so many people doing it. Since you're into FL Studio so deep, what is your favorite plugin that you love to use? Uh, I'll, I'll always say Patcher and FL Studio stock plugin. Patcher is just, um, it's really an endless possibilities plugin and you can use it to create, if you're not familiar or anybody listening or watching, that's not familiar with it. It's essentially a plugin that you can create plugins with in a sense, you can create instrument plugins. You can layer plugins on top of it. Then you can chain together all different types of mixing and effects plugins, and you can use it as a VST instrument. On the other side of things, you can open it up in the mixer and you can use it as an endless chain of effects and mixing plugins. So you could just connect mixing plugin after plugin and it's endless possibilities. And it's really just endless slots in your mixer. In FL Studio, you have the 10 slots, but if you're using Patcher, you can really use one Patcher and you can use a thousand plugins inside a Patcher if your computer can handle it. Fabulous. Have you been playing around with the FL Cloud now that it's out? I love it. That's I, honestly, when I first heard about it, I thought it was going to really, I thought it was going to make some noise, but I didn't think I, it was going to be implemented in, into my workflow as much as it is right now. I've, I've been using it heavy. I find myself going to that before the packs that I've accumulated over the last 20 years of producing somehow saved, right? <laughs> somehow I still have some of the same packs that I started out with. I find myself going to the cloud before any of those. The searching capabilities in there is just top notch. And it's realistically, it's brand new in the grand scheme of things. It just came out months ago and it's already just, it's implemented itself into my workflow, every single beat, every session.
If I want a sound effect, I go to FL Cloud. I just type in the sound effect and it, it has it. Fabulous. Actually, one of the plugins that I really enjoy in there is from the uh, plugin pack that they put out, and that's the drum designer. So cool. I can spend hours just playing around with that one. Can you walk us through your typical workflow of creating a brand new song? Yeah, work. If I'm if I'm going to start a beat from scratch, most of the time I'm starting with some sort of melody. I might just say, "All right, let's open up." I don't know. Like I stick with stock plugins a lot, so let's say I open up Flex, and just to get some inspiration, I'll just go through patches inside of Flex, different, different patches and different sounds and synths inside there. And if something just like sparks that inspiration, I'll try to start creating like some sort of chord progression or melody pattern out of that. Sometimes I'll go to the cloud or just one of my sample loops that I have, like one of my melody loops. Like I like to stockpile mel melody loops just to get inspiration, like instant inspiration, just to start chopping the samples. It's either one or two ways. I will either create some sort of chord progression that I get inspired by whatever like plugin I'm opening up, or I'll take a sample that either I created or somebody else did, and I'll just start chopping it and start messing with it to gain some sort of inspiration. And then just go from there. If I started with a sample chop, I'll layer in my own melodies on top of that a little bit later on and vice versa. If I start with my own melody and chord progression, I'll layer in some like samples on there. Another reason why I love the cloud is because you can just put the key in there. And if whatever key I already started to create my melody and my chord progression in, I can just like audition any sample and it just like instantly sounds like it goes because it tempo and key matches. So it's just fast workflow. From there, I just start like cooking up almost like in a four bar loop. And then once I feel like I have like a few sounds on there and like maybe an A and a B section and drums, mm -hmm. from then I'll probably just map out, I'll do an easy map out type of thing. And if I'm going to be sending it out to somebody specifically, if I'm working with, because I don't really sell beats online per se. A lot of times I'm doing it just for fun or I'm working with somebody like personally and we're working on a project together and uh, I'll send them that maybe like a basic kind of skeleton and not fill it up too much. Send it out. They send me vocals back. I'll put the vocals in there and then I'll fine tune things, make even more room or, and then, or fill in spaces where I feel like it needs to be filled. Sounds like a great workflow. What is your favorite genre to produce? I would say hip hop, rap, hard stuff, trap, stuff with like heavy bass, even though I've, I've made like some R and B I've done a bunch of different genres. I was in a hip hop metal band, but it's always like hard drums, heavy bass no matter what genre it is, really. What advice would you give to aspiring producers to stay motivated to really create something? I would say listen to different styles and genres of music. Focus in on what makes those songs great, like really reverse engineer them. And I'd say like when inspiration and motivation strikes, just start cooking up. Sometimes I'll stop myself in the middle of watching a video because I just feel the need to, it'll be like a random, some, maybe somebody else's FL tutorial video and they're, or they're just like cooking up, you know, it's a producer cooking up and I get that inspiration like right there. I'll just stop what I'm doing and just go and just start creating because sometimes you don't have that spark. So when you get that spark, utilize it and go to work. Have you used the uh, stem separation in FL and taken like a popular song to uh, reverse engineer it, seeing how the drums are built and, and the vocals and everything on the track? I haven't done it exactly for that reason, but that's a great, that's a great way to utilize that. I've used it to sample some stuff recently. I think it's great because when you go to sample a song that has all the instruments in there and you really only wanted like that one specific spot, that one specific melody and normally you'd have to EQ the drums out. Nowadays you just split the stems and you get the melody all by itself and you can utilize it and you get a way cleaner sample out of it. So I've used it in that aspect to sample stuff, but I think it's what you just said is that's a really good idea and a, and a way to reverse engineer songs and see what made them great. If you listen to just the drums by themselves, you can really hone in on how the producer created those things. And you have a website that you have all the templates and things that you've put up. Where can people find that? That's on yahelpme.com. Y-A, helpme.com. Fantastic. And on social media, for those who don't know you, where can they find you? 
No, it was just at Larry O with uh, two H's on everything. Fabulous. Same way it's spelled right here. Hmm. L R Y O H H. Great. Larry, I appreciate you being here today. And and I wish you the best of luck and I continue to follow you on your social media and see those great posts on FL Studio. I've got to tell you, I've learned quite a bit coming from Pro Tools over to FL Studio. So keep it up. That's awesome, man. I really appreciate appreciate that, Steve. Thank you for having me.